Sharzadian says, Confucius says that you have two lives and the second one begins when you realize you only have one. When and how did your second life begin? It's a very deep question. I think uh, most people who are past a certain age have had this feeling or phenomenon where they've gone through most of life a certain way and then gotten to a certain stage and then had to make um, some pretty big changes. And uh, I'm definitely also in that boat. Uh, I think for me it was... I struggled for a lot of my life to uh, have certain material and social successes. And when I achieved those material and social successes, or at least beyond the point where they uh, didn't matter as much to me anymore, I realized that my peer group and a lot of the people who were around me uh, and the people who had achieved the similar successes and were on their way to achieving more and more successes just didn't seem all that happy. And... Uh, and in my case, there was definitely hedonic adaptation. I'd very quickly get used to anything. So, let me to the conclusion, which seems trite, uh, that happiness is internal. Uh, and so then that set me on a path of starting to work more on my internal self uh, and realizing that all real success is internal and has very little to do with external circumstances. But one has to do the external thing anyway. That's how you're biologically hardwired. So it's, it's glib to say you can just turn it off. You have to do it. And you have to have your own life experience that then brings you back onto the internal path. So for me, it was just basically getting what I wanted was the problem. Very related to that, Daniel D161 asks, Do you feel an inner urge to know yourself fully, and has your worldly success satisfied this urge? Um, I would say, yeah, I absolutely do have an inner urge to know myself fully. Uh, and if anything, the worldly success has taken, has, has taken me further away from satisfying that urge. The more worldly success you have, um, the more your ego gets built up, the more fearful you might be of losing it all, the more you care what other people think, the more you have to lose, uh, the more you get caught up in this dream of who you think you are. And uh, so I think worldly success actually hurts. If, if from a young age you know that you want to know yourself and discover yourself much better, if you have that foresight or insight at an early age, then uh, material success will actually take you away from it. Uh, I'm not... Christian, but there is that famous line in the Bible uh, that you know Jesus says, "Easier than uh, you know a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven." And I think I I understand what he means. I actually don't think happiness is its own thing. I think a lot of what we think of as happiness is actually just pleasure. Uh, it's physical pleasure, either from oh that tasted good, or it might be momentary pleasure from oh she loves me or he loves me. Um, but I think true happiness comes out of peace. Uh, and peace comes out of many things, but it comes out of fundamentally understanding yourself. It comes from looking inside yourself and understanding how much of what you're reacting to are emotional reactions, or attachment, is self-inflicted suffering, it's desire that you have for things that you probably shouldn't care that much about. Um, there's a great line that my brother Kamal quoted in his book. He has a great book called uh, Love Yourself Like, like Your Life Depends On It, and another one called Live Your Truth. He's actually the philosopher in the family. I'm just the amateur. But uh, he had a great line in there where he said, I, I once asked him, a monk, um, you know, uh, what, what is your secret to, to peace and happiness? And the monk said, I say yes. To everything that happens, I say yes. And that's very hard for us to imagine because in life we're used to fighting for everything. We're used to getting whatever we want. We're used to reacting. We're used to immediately saying that stinks, that's good, that's bad. We're used to constantly judging things. And the act of judging something separates you from that thing. And over time, as you judge, 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 you invariably judge people, you judge yourself, you separate yourself from everything, and then you end up lonely. And that feeling of disconnection and loneliness is what eventually leads to suffering. And then you struggle, you resist against the world the way it is, and that, that is what your ego does. It helps you operate in the real world by resisting against, against things you don't like. Um, and that is a source also of a lot of unhappiness. So I actually think happiness is the absence of suffering. It comes from peace. And that comes from just being very careful about desire, judgment, and reactions, realizing that you don't really need something anymore, that, that, that something is not important to you. So to get very practical about it, I have a whole series of tricks that I use to try and be happier in the moment. And I started doing these a few years ago, 
And at first they were silly and difficult and required a lot of attention, but now some of them have become second nature. And I think doing them, I've just re religiously, I've managed to increase my happiness level quite a bit. Um, the obvious one is meditation um, and insight meditation. Uh, so working towards a specific purpose on it, which is to try and understand how my mind works. But then just being very aware in every moment. So if I catch myself judging somebody, then uh, I can stop myself and say, well, what's the positive interpretation of this? So um, I used to get annoyed about things. Now I always look for the positive side of it. And it used to take uh, a rational effort. It used to take a few seconds for me to come up with a positive. Um, now I can do it sub-second. My brain is trained to do it automatically. Um, similarly, I try, you know, there are other hacks. I could try to get more sunlight on my skin. That's an easy, cheap one. Look up and smile. Uh, tell yourself, tell your friends that you're a happy person. Then you'll be forced to be, uh, to conform to it. You'll have, uh, the consistency bias. You'll have to live up to it. Your friends will expect you to be a happy person. Um, these are little hacks. I mean, they, they add up over time. They're not going to pull you out of a severe depression. That's a much deeper, more difficult thing. But if you're just trying to upgrade your happiness ever so slightly, um, you can do it. Um, another hack would be uh, just any time you catch yourself desiring something, say, is it really that important to me that I'd be unhappy unless this goes my way? And you're going to find the vast majority of things is just not true. Um, I think dropping caffeine made me happier. It made me more of a stable person. Working out every day makes me happier. Uh, if you have peace of body, you'll have, it's much easier to have peace of mind. Um, so there's, there's lots and lots of these things that could go on. on. This could be a full podcast. Uh, but I'm still discovering and learning these things myself. Uh, I think it, it would be interesting to maybe catalog them. Uh, but I suspect that a lot of them are deeply, deeply personal. I, if, if I step back for a second and answer the question properly, the most important trick, I think, to being happy is to realize that happiness is a skill that you develop and a choice that you make. You choose to be happy and then you work at it. It's just like building muscles. It's just like losing weight. It's just like succeeding at your job. It's just like learning calculus. You decide it's important to you. You prioritize it above everything else. You read everything on the topic and then you work at it. Uh, and again, I think the Buddhists have done a lot of good work on this. I don't think modern science has good answers here. I think the modern world is actually really bad. The modern world is full of distractions. Things like Twitter and Facebook are not making you happy. They're actually making you unhappy. Um, you're essentially playing a game that's created by the creators of those systems. And yes, it can be a useful game once in a blue moon, but most of the time you're just wasting your time. You're engaging in envy, dispute, and uh, resentment comparison, jealousy, anger about things that frankly just don't matter.